Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. V-I-E, my personal mantra, viability, integrity, extensibility. Three words that sum up the responsibilities of an architect in any solution mode. One, is it viable? Will it work? Will it do what it needs to do? Not worrying about how well it does it or how beautiful it is, um, or if others would even do it differently. Just does it meet the requirement, our, our fundamental purpose. Two, integrity. How well will it perform from an integrity perspective? Does it damage anything else, any data, any processes, any customer experience, or any other systems it interfaces with? We have an obligation to protect our current estate and operation. And finally, extensibility. Have we left, left enough doors open so we don't prevent ourselves from things we may want to be doing in the future? Have we closed anything off unnecessarily that could potentially be building harmful technical debt? So that's it, VIE. Viability, integrity, extensibility. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome, and uh, a great intro there from Paul Herman of IBM, reminding us of the importance of VIE, viability, integrity, and extensibility. So, uh, welcome to you all. Thank you, Paul. We'll have another um, uh, short video at the uh, end of the session today, uh, one of Terry Blevins' Talk It Tuesday tips. So. But first of all, welcome, as I said, wherever you are in the world, um, I hope you're well. And thank you for joining us. Um, we uh, are, are moving down the path nicely on our Toolkit Tuesdays uh, now and uh, every every other week. So um, uh, put it in your put it in your calendars. Um, but um, today we are um, going to focus on uh, on one presentation and then uh, another tip at the end. But before we get there, just so that you can get the most out of your experience today on on the WebEx platform. Um, I want to tell you how to ask questions here. So the Q&A um, channel is the way to ask questions. And if you can't see the Q&A channel, if you go to the bottom right of your screen, you'll see three dots. And if you click on those, you'll have the opportunity to open the Q&A um, channel. And that is uh, where I would ask you to put questions for our speaker today, please. And use the chat channel to talk amongst yourselves. And um, we quite often... Uh, get people saying where they're joining us from, which is great to see because it's uh, it's all over the world. But without further ado, we're gonna move, move on today. Um, and we have uh, an interesting uh, topic today, which is the, the use of formalization and visualization as part of the decision-making process. And to talk us through this, we have Anoush Shahi. Uh, welcome Anoush. He works as an enterprise architecture consultant with EAT LLC. And as part of this, he's involved with performing work in the enterprise architecture area, including digital transformation and delivering training on TOGAF 9.2, IT for IT and Archimate 3.0, all standards of the open group. So thank you for uh, spreading the word, Anoush. He has extensive experience on enterprise architecture modeling projects, particularly using the iServer 2015 EA tool for large banks in the United Arab Emirates. Anoush specializes in analyzing the foundation and the operating model of the business for which enterprise architecture is deployed. And he is also an impanel, impaneled as a lead expert enterprise architect 
with the National E-Governance Division and Digital India with the um, Indian government, which is some work that the Open Group has been very involved in as well. So it gives me great pleasure to uh, give a warm virtual welcome from the Open Group to Anuj Shahi. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much for the kind words. I am just uh, loading up my screen. Okay, so one very important thing about uh, enterprise architecture tools is that it makes our life very much easy to communicate what we want to communicate. And we can do a lot. So Archi tool is an open source tool. You can download its Windows version or you can download its Mac version. Both of them, it works very well. At the right hand side of the tool, you can see the palette using which we can do the architectural modeling. So in very short, in a very quick way, I just show you how to use this tool so that you will have not a, like you will have no problem using this tool. So you can see I have created a diagram here. It tries to tell a story, which you can see. I will explain that in a second. But how to create a diagram like that? So you just use a palette at the right hand side. You use a particular instance and instantiate it. So I just took the location notation and instantiated it. I can just say that this location is new. Okay, and then I want that a device or let's say a server should be established over here. In current times, we can talk about cloud, but cloud also has got a location, maybe Asia cloud, Europe cloud, or America's cloud. So that you know, it uh, it can be told as a node or any other uh, like entity of that nature. So here I'm just instantiating a device which I want to call as New York server. This is how the infrastructure team gives a name to those server. So now I have got an interest that because this server is there, what if I am interested in knowing the TCP IP number for this? The, uh, the cost which we incurred in order to procure this server so you can always get into the uh, properties option of that particular entity and we can add attributes to them. So attributes means, you know, like all of us have got a, like attribute. My name is Anuj. So that's an attribute for me. I have got, you know, I am five feet, six inches high. So, the, so, so those kind of elements are attributes and that we can use in the visualization as well. So I just want to give two names over here. One is TCP IP and this TCP IP number, those who are not from infrastructure background, these numbers are something like 172, 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14. Infrastructure team understands it very well what it means, that it is not required for, you know, just for an enterprise architect to know that much, but be aware with that is a good idea. Now this server, it has got a cost and we want to put a cost uh, attribute over here. The cost attribute can be different for every server which we have in our organization. Press enter and it has been accepted. Now you can see just at the bottom, I'm showing to you that uh, this is the device I have given attributes for. The earlier device, I have not given an uh, in, uh, like any attribute value. That means if I can, over the period of time in the practice of enterprise architecture, if I can uh, continuously update this kind of attributes for every server, for every application component when the license is started, when the license is ending. That means we can get huge amount of information about how our business is being supported by the IT infrastructure which we have in place. So you can very well understand these tools can give ex, uh, like, like, like they can export all these values into an Excel sheet. We can do a pivot table, etc. Or a bit high-end tools, we have got an option called application portfolio management. So that also can be done, and we can get huge amount of information as to what is the cost of my infrastructure, what is the uh, uh, application landscape, and you can see the heat map by the tracker options because you have got the start date of the application and licensing life cycle of the application. So we can see all those things in the tools, etc. 
this is a, uh, it's a, it's a basic tool. So here in RP, we don't have the lock, but the point is the basic ingredients is here. We can see that here in a bit different way by, by transforming into an Excel sheet. One more technique I want to show you. You see, this is a device. It, I can move over here. I can move to the left. I can move to the west. And again, I come back over here. No one in the world hears what this device is going around. But relationships are very important. So here in the palette, you can use the magic connector and just, uh, you know, uh, just you want to connect it. So I just click on this one and click on this one. And you see the tool itself shows as that these are the valid relationships possible between these two entities. Relationships are very important. So here they are all Archimate relationships. If this is not an Archimate class, so I will just say use the relationships, which is the easiest one, associated relation, for example. We like as a human being, we are all associated with each other. We can say that way. That way, uh, it's a straightforward relationship. So now you see the value of relation. When I move this device over here, when I move this device over here, when I move this device over here, we know that this device belongs to a location called New York. Just like we have in our like in our world, we have passport system. Your passport decides which country you belong to, no matter where you go. So that is the value of the relationship. Okay, that we just now completed how to create a diagram using the entities, etc. So we are done with that. Now here I have shown a diagram to you that a particular location where a server named BRC is there on that uh, that realizes a particular application component. Application component serves the need of an application service. And what is an application service for? It uh, creates or it supports a business service. So you can create a diagram, a storyline is perfectly fine. And then another diagram where location is the same, which I copied from the previous diagram, and the server name is different. So we can have multiple diagrams like this with different stakeholder perspective can be captured like this under the same folder in the tool. And then just look at this. I click on these locations and I am clicking on the visualization. So what do we see here is that uh, this tool is able to connect many things together based upon the commonality of the element. So it shows that at Noida location, there are two servers. One server is not being used for anything while the other server is being used for a credit card business service. So isn't that a great information? You can have 20 diagrams and this tool will quickly connect of them, connect all of them based upon the common elements and we can see a connected view. The last thing I'd like to show is a business perspective of the diagrammatic representation. So this is a banking organization. It's uh, uh, you know, it is a $7 billion company and then it has got 35% of the business comes from the credit card services, which is being realized from a location called Nevada and having application components and application services in between. Now the CIO who joins has, has been given the induction. In the induction, he, he uh, like, like she was informed about the usage of this tool and says so she has become conversant with that. Down the line, she realizes that, oh, she is the owner of 35% of the business. So obviously, it will hit her that she should know more about how the business is managed. So she just clicks on the credit card. She just clicks on the credit card services and clicks on the visualization. And what she sees is something very much amazing again. That is, you know, that credit card services is uh, actually being supported in the credit card service and it is using the uh, settlement application service, application component, and this is server, which is being kept at a particular location called Noida location. So she books the flight, comes to Noida, and finds out that all the servers are perfectly taken care of. They are very secure and safe, but she realizes that Noida comes under the seismic zone, and every quarter uh, on the Richter scale of four, uh, earthquake happens. So, well, it's not stable. So maybe if we can do some other location and have a BCP plan, that will be better. So C recommends to the board after going back to the head office in Mumbai that, uh, you know, 
uh, if we can have uh, a uh, disaster recovery plan maintain a mirror image of this entire scenario so that in case something goes wrong at this location to our server we can switch over to our uh, alternate mechanism within five minutes time so that way the board is likely to approve that uh, request very much because this is the internal blueprint being owned by the organization and the board knows that these are the genuine diagrams and genuine information and hence the likelihood of approval for the uh, budget for disaster recovery plan is very high. So that way these tools can be used to take the strategic decision and it helps the board also and the top management also understand the value that is being produced by this uh, by the enterprise architects and the ease of communication of that. So that's all I wanted to communicate. Thank you very much, Steve. Anoush, thank you very much. That's uh, quite difficult to uh, to demonstrate modelling in uh, in such a short period of time, but thank you for doing it so uh, so succinctly and, and so clearly. So um, I don't know if you're able to join us on video, Anoush, at this point for some questions, but if not, don't worry. Um, we can we can do it without seeing you. Um, no there you go. Nice to see your face. <laughs> so, well, welcome again, and thank you very much for doing that. So, a um, few questions for you. I mean, all your experience in modeling. Is there one kind of golden rule that you'd share with people that you that you've learned over the years to to guide you on how to uh, how to go about modeling an enterprise architecture? Our modeling is as confident as our storyline when we are talking about that to the board or to our recipient. So right. our storyline must be very much clearly understood. It should be simple, succinct, and it should, it should have a business outcome inherent in that. It need not be complex. It, it should be simple, understandable, but picturization and visualization is the thing which matters more in the model. Right, right. And I, I know one thing we've heard over, over the years is sometimes when it comes to enterprise architecture, the, the use of terms with particularly with senior management is so important. You know, you may not actually sell, tell them you're doing architecture. Is that the same with modeling? Do you, do you kind of say, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to use the technical description of modeling here, but I'm going to enable uh, visualization for you. Is that the kind of approach you? Yeah, okay. what is, yeah, I mean, the idea is between the one who has to make the decision and the one who is prompting them to make the decision is communicate what is in my heart as an idea into the other mind and in other minds. So if I can choose a very simple language to understand, but if the content has got a good value, uh, rest is, you know, just using the word for city, etc., that people may get confused. But if we just want to say the simple things, that you know, it's a capability. Capability is very much understood. Those terms are not complex, also, as I think. But uh, you know, uh, if we want to uh, to to be skill a bit, that I want to say that this is the ability of the organization, and you know, uh, and it is providing a particular service. So, a uh, complexity of the term is not the point here. If we have the storyline and simplicity of communication, then visual will certainly describe that. Right. Okay. Okay. And when it comes to <clears throat> when it comes to doing the models, are you um, you, you basically hoping that one size fits all? That, that one model will work for the, the the different stakeholders in an organization, or do you have to tailor and do separate models? Um, actually, that is where the enterprise architecture tools come very much handy. That is, suppose we are creating to the top, uh, we, like we are showing to the top management a architecture roadmap. In that, we are only showing the high level milestones and the key gaps that are to, like being updated on the and the work packages, projects that we are showing. Suppose someone interested, hey, in that uh, PLM governance project which you are showing over here, how many activities are there? How many uh, like different processes are involved in that? So these tools provide a click down child diagram relation thing. So I can just attach a detailed diagram with that and click it at the time when the question has come so that I can dive into details 
for someone from the middle management or operational level who wants to know more and again dive back and come back to the top level diagram. So this enterprise tool, that is called flags and whistles of the tool. Costlier the tool, more will be the flags and whistles. But that is the purpose of the enterprise access tool, to simplify the communication and at the same time maintain that within the organization so that we can refer to it again and again, which is called a blueprint. Okay, okay, that, that, that's good. So in, if, if you were <clears throat> in a situation, in a, you know, in a consultancy situation and you only had time to model to, to model one perspective. Where would you go? Would it would it would it be for the builder or the the guy the guy or lady who's financing the the um, uh, enterprise architecture or the CEO? Where would where would you target? Oh, that is very straightforward. Design is top down. Right. So if top has agreed, just do only one diagram for top, and the top says. You are talking sales. We will use you again in the future. Your job is done by one diagram. Right, right. So if it doesn't have top level support, then it's always going to be a challenge. We've heard that uh, yeah. in, yeah. in other respects. Yes, I have experienced it again and again. If a project manager thinks that I will do wonder in the organization, it will be shot down because that person might not have thought about the operational details and the cost involved, etc. And the budgeting itself has not been done. The decision of that nature happens from top down. That has been there today. It was there thousand years ago. It will be there thousand years after. Right, right. Now, today you were you were uh, your demonstration was using a tool called Archie, which as some of our um, attendees will know is a is an open source uh, modeling tool. There are other much more sophisticated kind of commercial tools, and uh, you, you've mentioned some of those. So, wh when would you kind of need to to go from one to the other? What kind of functionality to the uh, to the more commercial tools bring yes so you know uh, for example in archi does not support the open group standard repository structure open group recommends that we must show preliminary phase architecture vision bcd efps and the artifacts for individual phases must be maintained in that Whereas RP is more geared towards RP made, it does not have that architecture option also. We can create some artifact just to prove our point, but it does not give the ready-made uh, like option like that. But the tools like iServer, Beast Design, Abacus, Edwire, they give a standard because they are approved tools by the open group uh, uh, as well. So they like they give those kind of you know uh, architecture repository. And also, you know, beyond that the version control because these are architectural diagram and it takes huge amount of effort to freeze the diagram after talking with the stakeholder so configuration management must be there in the tool archi doesn't have it as part in project uh, the enterprise architect, i doubt it has it but you know i server and uh, for example mega and plan view they've got much robust um, like, you know right. this configuration management uh, like options etc and beyond that, for example, in, in Mega, you can add risk to each and every element and calculate the total risk of the project itself. Those kind of flags and risks are available in the high-end tool. That's great. So we're, we're running short on time, but one more question, because I, <clears throat> I personally <clears throat> think this is a great thing. But um, here at the Open Group, we, we uh, have a way of exporting files from one tool to another. Can, can you uh, mention that? Um, to our to our folks, please. Yeah, data exchange. Data exchange is a universal uh, option in all the tools, whether high end or low or low end. Even RT also, we can transform the diagrams which we made as a learner into high end tools by converting into XML file, by exporting into XML file, and importing into the into the recipient tool. So it's it's very easy to to transform and and you know. Uh, export and import diagrams and content from one tool to the other. Yeah, yeah, the exchange file format. It's a great, great thing. So <clears throat> we will leave it there for today, Anush. I very much appreciate you um, sharing your experience with us on, on modeling, and there'll be some uh, some uh, people, I'm sure, who will have a much better <clears throat> understanding of how to go about it uh, as a result okay. of your talk today. So. Uh, warm uh, virtual round of applause for Anush Shahi. Thank you for joining us today, Anush. Thank you very Thank much, you. everyone. Thank you. 
So now we will uh, move to, uh, as I said earlier in the show, uh, we'll move to one of Terry Blevins' Toolkit Tuesday tips. So um, Terry is the owner and operator of Enterprise Wise LLC, where he provides strategic enterprise architecture services. He's worked in the computer industry for over 40 years, and he's currently uh, a, sits on the Open Group Governing Board as a director. He's also a fellow of the Open Group. So over to Terry for this week's tip. Hi, my name is Terry Blevins with the Toolkit Tuesday Tip. Architects in general typically enjoy modeling. That's good. However, you must ensure that you don't model just because you enjoy modeling. This Toolkit Tuesday Tip is to always model with purpose from a specific perspective. Doing this helps ensure the enterprise moves forward based on better informed decisions. So what are the implications of modeling with purpose? Well, first, focusing attention on specific perspectives when modeling means you have to understand the pertinent perspectives which change as time goes by. Early on, your focus may be on the perspective of those faced with making decisions on a huge change. That decision may be a go, no go decision. Later, maybe after a go decision was made, your focus may be on the users impacted by the change. Even further down the line, your focus may be on the developers. There are other perspectives, of course, customers, operators, maintainers, etc., each of which may require specific models that are honed to address specific concerns. Timing is important. So address specific perspectives and do so at the right time. Your purpose is to ensure you have the right models for the right audience at the right time. As perspectives are key, the first thing that you might want to model are the concerns of the perspectives. This does two very important things. One, it helps you understand and gain the trust of those sharing the perspectives as you use that model to assure them you understand their concerns. And two, make sure you are on the right track. Do this quickly and stay in touch with the cadence of the organization. So using models to communicate concerns and get agreement on those concerns is the second area. Your purpose is to ensure those relevant to the perspectives trust that you understand their concerns. Third, once you have modeled concerns, model just enough of the approach for moving forward relative to that perspective. You understand their concerns, now model the solution to address those concerns and use those models to get concurrence on moving forward. Your purpose is to ensure those relevant to the perspective are willing to take the steps forward implied by the architecture. As you are modeling, ensure the models are congruent. This is hard to do and something that may be only of interest to the enterprise architect, but here's the importance of tying things together which is the purpose of this area. Ensure that the enterprise perspective is addressed and you as an enterprise architect can ensure that that happens. For more information, please check out the TOGAF library. Keep architecting for enterprise value. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Terry, for your insights as usual. Um, as you say, model with uh, model for purpose, model with purpose. Um, uh, your usual mantra of uh, architect for enterprise value uh, fits right in there. So thank you for those uh, those words on modeling today. So uh, that's it for today's episode, folks. I very much appreciate you joining us. I hope you uh, got something out of it and uh, um, it's uh, you know, we'll, we'll be uh, keeping doing these every other week. So the next one is November 30th. So please join us on November 30th, where we'll be looking at uh, a, a topic that is um, uh, near and dear to my heart. It's 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 wonderful to it, it'll be a, it'll be a great event. Um, it's how to leverage open standards to accelerate digital transformation. And we'll be joined by um, Stephanie Ramsey of, of Raytheon and uh, Keith Vandenbrink from ServiceNow and Sylvain Marie. Um, so th they are going to, they, they have together written a novel called Turning Point, a novel about architects building a digital foundation. 
and um, it's it really puts into a practical perspective and an approachable perspective how you might go about using different uh, standards, open standards, at different times in your digital transformation journey. So, really want to uh, to tune in for, and uh, you'll get a lot out of it. Meanwhile, if you wanted to do some uh, homework, you can download the novel that I've um, spoken about from the uh, Open Group Press area of the Open Group Library. So. Please go to the website and look for that. They say it's called Turning Point, a novel about architects building a digital foundation. It's a, it's a good read and, and an easy read as well, even better. For now, that's it. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Hopefully see you in two weeks' time on November 30th. Um, but for now, um, I'm Steve Nunn. Thank you for watching Togaf, um, Tool, Toolkit Tuesday. Bye-bye for now.